I did a little over 26 years in prison, man. 26 yeah. years? Yeah, man. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, uh, I was trying to fight a revolution, right? And trying to change the government and trying to get people's minds to change on certain things. Uh, but I, I, in the end, I realized what I needed to do was just first change myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I needed, to, I needed to make change in here and in here. Describe your upbringing. My upbringing was uh, poor. Uh, we didn't have much of anything, actually, really, you know? Growing up in the... I was born in, in the 60s, the mid-60s, so... It was rough growing up in the 70s and the, and the 80s. Yeah. In uh, New York City. Yeah. And so we didn't have much of anything. Mm -hmm. Being in that type of a negative circle, I guess I was attracting negativity, kind of like, but not that bad, but not good either as far as the law is concerned. Drug sale, nonviolent felony, uh, $40 worth of drugs. They gave, they gave me six years for that and one and a half years of parole after the six years of... Uh, incarceration right for forty dollars you know a forty dollar so-called sale where i was actually entrapped uh i i'm not a drug dealer or anything like that but i thought i was helping somebody out i thought that person was a friend but he was actually an undercover cop that was trying to take me down why uh, i don't know i don't want to start no conspiracy theories here or anything right. like that but it seemed like he kept on trying to befriend me and hang out with me. And after a while, after a few months, we ended up, you know, being cool with each other. And the one day he presented to me in a way that I hadn't been used to seeing him. Uh, he had a long scraggly beard. And I was, I was like, well, what's happening? What's, what's going on with you? Oh, I'm sick. I, I need some dope. They won't sell it to me. Can you help me out? I, Okay, all right. I'll you know I, I'll do this one time for and I went in that cop for him. As soon as I gave it to him, I got locked up. As soon as I walked away from him, so it was total entrapment. Yes, yeah, that was terrible, man. And I was doing good, you know. I was doing well. I was engaged to get married. Uh, just took me right down to the bottom again. You know, it's like. And the first thing they asked me in the precinct was like, yo, we'll, let, we'll make this disappear. We'll, we'll, we'll make this go away, man. All we need, we, we know you're not the drug dealer, but we need, we need to take the drug dealer down and we need you to do it for us. Mm -hmm. I was like, why would you, why would you, why would you put, even put my life in jeopardy like this? Right, because if, if you tell, if you tell. Because I didn't help out, they threw the book at me, man. So basically, I lost my youth in prison. Mm -hmm. Are you upset about that? How no, I'm not upset about it. No, no, because they're growing pains, man. And I'm part of my growth and development. I realized that uh, I'm a bit of a fool because I had to learn from my own experiences. Whereas a wise man, he can learn from the experiences of others, mm -hmm. you know? So it was a little rough, but uh, no, I'm not, I have no animosity or anything against anyone, you know? Where are you now? What do you want to do? What, do you, what is the future for Yaya? What do you want out of this life? A healthy lifestyle, man. I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian 34 years. And, uh, you know, I'm very careful, you know, with what I eat and and, uh, and uh, I still weigh the same as I did when I was 17 years old, you know. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything anyway. What right. good is it to be a millionaire or have all these th toys or, or, or know all these people and be all famous and you don't have your health? Yeah. Uh, or, or, or how about even maybe even your mental health, you know, where yeah. your mind takes you to dark places, then it's hard for you to break out of, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I'm blessed. Yeah. Yes, I did 26 years in prison, but I used the prison system as a university of thinking. Uh, I would have to say that the, uh, the, 
the pivotal moments actually came from bad moments, you know, and I pivoted into a better direction. Okay. Physically and mentally and spiritually as well. Like for instance, with my inner being, my mental health, I had to be introduced to a lot of adversity in order to see who I am as a man and what I can deal with and how to deal with things, have consequential thinking, having respect for other people, you know? Yeah. Uh, just love for everybody, respect for everybody. Live and let live, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I live, I live, I live in a men's shelter in, uh, in, uh, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And you want to get out of there, right? Yes. I need housing, right? I, I, I need employment. And, uh, you know, being that I'm just so freshly out, it's like, it's like I'm on ground zero right now. So it's, I'm, I'm walking softly upon Mother Earth. But because of my past and because of, uh, like, uh, uh, I, 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 it's been hard for me to get schooling. Uh, so I don't have the degrees. But I have, I do have the experience, so what I would like to be is like maybe a youth counselor or a peer counselor. I'm a welder also by trade, so I, I do a lot of, I do different things. I'm, I'm available for whatever, you know, I'm a quick learner. I just hope that I can get that chance being that I am an ex Ex con, you know. Yeah. I wish it could be possible that I could live with my wife, my wife, my wife, uh, and I cannot live together because my parole officer denied me access to live in her place, place of uh, where she dwells. You know, the parole officer said that there's a reason because I did ask, and she said because there was a there was damage big hole and a leak from the ceiling. So when it rains, we got water coming from the ceiling. So okay. that's why. The solution is send me over to a homeless shelter where there's nothing but conf mass confusion and, and uh, a lot of problems and subject me to that instead. I don't get it, it's, it's, uh, the pressing continues, you know? The scalp shop was what catapulted me to uh, help me get this start, you know what I'm saying? Because it gives you a confidence, it gives you a confidence that you, you're gonna present well. Looking good and the scalp shop's way of helping you look good to, to uh, um, bringing back my hairline, uh, is a major step and I love it. I'm thankful for you guys. Thanks for tuning in to Yaya Hunter's story. This is the point in his life where he's trying to pivot to make a better life for himself. We aided in this new chapter by giving him complimentary scalp micropigmentation. And now we're asking our community to help with employment opportunities or donations so he can get out of that shelter and onto his feet. We set up a GoFundMe page and we thank you in advance for sharing this story or anything that you can help out with.